I'm Vicky Arienio. I happen to be leading this group in this community. Uh, uh, the organization is called Destiny Friends International. The Destiny Friends International came out of a life experience and that is how we came into paper bead making. Uh, when I was very sick and I had no way out, had issues with my marriage, I was left alone with my three children, I started looking for ways of how I can empower myself. I managed to get uh, knowledge in paper bead making and I thought it wise that if we put our hands together as ladies, we could go far. This is paper beading that we are doing right now. This is a paper that we cut in all shapes that you love. You cut them in inches, centimeters, and any shape you would like, you love the, the necklace to look. So after cutting the paper that I will show, you'll get such a shape. From this shape, you're going to roll it and you'll get some, you'll get the, neck, the, the, the bead coming out like this. Now this is an oval shape. After shaping, after rolling it, you have to roll as many as possible so that you can get a full necklaces. Then after cutting it, you've rolled a number of it, you vanish it. In the process of rolling, you have to have a varnish, a gel kind of, of varnish that will help you to stick the, the paper together. After sticking it like this, this is now a bead. You're going to put it separate anywhere clean because it doesn't need that. Through this paper beading, as I call it paper beading, we get necklaces, long, short, you can make bags out of it, that we have a sample, we have this, this is made out of paper and small beads. The beads, small beads are bought, as well as papers are also bought, but the process of paper takes some time to be done. Then this is blue and green, then black. They are paper and it is varnished. When it is varnished, it glitters. It is nice, very beautiful. Even if you dip it in water for three days, that one, I am very sure it will not get spoiled. Apart from paper bead making, we also have counseling and guidance. Uh, we do medical support to our clients. Uh, most of the people we have in the group are either HIV positive or they have uh, lived without husbands. They are widows 
or they are just vulnerable women who have issues with their marriages or their families. So when we get together in paper bead making, we are able to empower ourselves. We make the beads, put them together, look for the market. The lazy person gets a, lazy, a, a little percentage. A hardworking person gets a bigger percentage. And that is what empowers the women. So they have to work hard to empower, to support their families. Paper bead making has supported our families and we have seen our children into school. We have seen many things in our families. Those who have been living with HIV have been able to get improved medication and they have been able to improve the livelihoods in their families. Yeah, I'm George Stanley Samba, the executive director of the Ghetto Film Project, an organization that uh, helps kids in the ghetto. We use film, arts, and sports to rehabilitate kids and uh, empower youth and other people and stakeholders in uh, the ghetto. In the ghettos in Uganda, people think it's where dreams are killed, people think it's where there is nothing good that comes from there. But actually, I came from the ghetto, and um, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a successful filmmaker, I've won awards, I've made a career for myself, which means there are very many kids down here that actually can be empowered to follow the same direction. So we come in and mentor them all the time. What if my results were mixed up? What if my, the machines are wrong? I mean, what if I'm negative? Well... They say you never really know until you test again after three months, so... <laughs> really? Yo. We've been doing this all day and we have a line finish up when you mess up. What did you... I'm sorry, but that's good. Can kubile kuna matovu mana wanyabo ebi roto vyo raba guba mochisa Terina mugere kadunda chilabo shea kutondena Natama nyiti chikugwana Ono ya muwa kuyimba Gwenaku kuchanga mupira Mulala magezi gamu chivina Fena ya tuwaburunji Kusinzi laje ya kutondena Ngala vecha chikugwana Echiloto chomoto Nisana chikula Echiloto chomoto To empower a woman in the 21st century is empowering a nation, it's empowering a family, it's empowering a kid out there. Let me give a testimony of my own. Um, I was raised by a single mom and um, I remember the time when she was really down in bedridden and life wasn't really good. We lacked a figure in the family. First of all, our dad wasn't there because by that time they had already divorced. And um, that's how I think I kind of ended up doing drugs at the age of nine uh, that's how I ended up leaving home and going to the streets for some time that's how I ended up having a life that no kid would actually desire to have why there was a figure missing in the family but I can still stand testimony regardless of the fact that neighbors refused kids to play with us regardless of the fact that we had no friends growing up regardless of the fact that Life was really unbearable. When my mom came back and stood on her feet, when she finally started fighting back HIV and she got on her feet and she was empowered through making of paper beads. I remember we used to actually also make the paper beads and necklaces at home that she would sell. When she got empowered, it also helped me think big, think wide, think wider than the surrounding I was in think wider than the situation I was going through and uh, I believe today I have over 42 film festival selections for my three short films and it's simply because there was a strong woman that stood and reignited the purpose of living in me. That is the importance of empowering a woman. So women empowerment isn't just about 
women flaring egos over men it's actually about women standing with men in building a nation and that's why it's key to empower a woman It was in the year 1992, I went for an HIV test, I didn't know, I didn't expect, and I found I was HIV positive. I had three children, I was pregnant of one, and uh, by that time, my husband abandoned me. Since 1992, I have lived a single life. I've been able to raise my children. One, I looked upon God. I was able to look to God and ask God for guidance. When God gave me guidance, I was able to stand. I joined the paper bead making, and that was one of the things that helped me sustain my children. I found a friend who was able to support my children in school for a few years, but there were other things. When we support children in school, dear sponsors, there are things that go beyond the school fees. A child can be paid school fees, but a child can fail to go to school because of lack of food, because of social issues. My children had school fees support, but they were not able to go to school. They didn't have shoes. They couldn't go to school in an empty stomach. They had the surrounding that traumatized them. They were stigmatized. At the neighborhood, they were not allowed to play with anybody's child. And that touched me. When I was bedridden, my house was surrounded with grass because nobody wanted to come into my house. They thought whenever they would just step into my compound, whenever they would step into my house, they would catch HIV. A woman who is not empowered is a woman who is like a carpet. A woman who is not empowered has no voice. A woman who is not financially empowered is a woman who is looked down upon. But a woman who is financially empowered is able to look after her family, is able to look after the neighbors, is able to boost the economy of the country. Tell me a family where the husband has died and left a woman and seen if that woman has failed to look after the children. And I will tell you a family where a woman has died and has left a man or a woman has been abandoned by a man and a woman has been able to raise the family and the man has totally failed. A family with a man without a woman has no progress. A family with a woman without a man is able to stand on its own. I am a living testimony. Women out there, please come back and empower yourself. Believe in yourselves and come out. When I was bedridden with HIV, they said I was not going somewhere. But now here I am. I am a voice to the voiceless. I, can, I am able to talk for the voiceless. I am able to collect the women and empower them. And I am able to give them encouraging words. Women out there, you should always tell your men. You should always tell those who look up, down upon you. Tell them, I am yet coming back after this commercial break. And indeed you will come back and prove them wrong where they have put you.